Okay. Um, all right. Let's make this bigger. All right, cool team. So uh, uh, hope everybody's had a good um, good week or so. Um, given that things seem to be stabilizing, or well, in some areas they're getting worse, but at least in um, in our area of the world, they seem to be not getting drastically worse. Santa Barbara is getting ready to move into red and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I think we'll go ahead with our first field trip next week. And so um, I want to talk about that first and what's going to go on with that. Um, so our first field trip is going to be to Malibu Lagoon, which um, if you guys aren't super familiar with it, talking about 40 minute drive or so from campus, from CSUCI campus. Um, uh, essentially in the middle of downtown Malibu. Um, uh, so if you're coming from campus, there's various ways you can get there. Uh, we'll talk about it, but you could, you could uh, you know, go on the 101 and then shoot out to the coast uh, or uh, down like say uh, Las, Las Virginis, or you could just go the PCH route the whole way. If you guys are in LA, obviously you can take uh, the 10 to the one and then from Santa Monica, it's about uh, assuming there's no traffic, about a 10 minute drive or so from Santa Monica. Um, so for next week, we will be, our, our, our class session starting at um, nine o'clock, I will try to be there much earlier, but, but um, uh, we'll be there from uh, starting at nine. Uh, I'm still experimenting, one of, our, one of our 360 cameras died. So I'm still experimenting with how I'm going to capture this, but if you guys, you know, are in a, a just physical location, you can't get here. If you guys are, you know, yourself ill or need to quarantine or just whatever reason, no one needs to come. You do not need to come to this. This is an optional thing. Um, when we're there, I will be taking um, uh, pictures and such uh, and, and some video and such so that you guys can see what we're doing. It, it, I'll try my best to capture everything, but, but, um, not having done this before this is my first time of doing a virtual tour like this. Uh, uh, no promises, but but you guys will, if you don't go, you'll at least be able to get all the key main points. So don't stress about that. I will attempt to stream the event. So if you guys cannot come on uh, next Friday morning, you should be able to log on. I'm still experimenting. So it, may, it might be Zoom, it might be a YouTube live stream. Um, I'll let you guys know, but uh, but again, if you if you can't make if you can't come out, still try to log on. Maybe we'll have internet connectivity. Maybe I'll send you a link, and it won't work. But at least try to do that. I'm hopeful that it'll work. Um, and then after, regardless, after the fact, um, uh, if that's not able to be, if that doesn't work, or or there's it doesn't record or something, I will also have a site video summary thing. Um, that I will upload at some point, you know, after afternoon on on next Friday. So again, if you guys can't make it, you'll either be able to watch it, watch us simultaneously, or 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 after the fact, um, see a you know a summary overview of what we're going to do. What are we going to do? Talk about that in a second. Talk about our assignment. But um, essentially, we're just going to be getting a sense of what this wetland is like. Now, this is our first trip, so probably also be a little bit just general wetland orientation stuff and, and things that maybe aren't necessarily about um, about this one particular site. But really the assignment, the main focus is for you guys to do a site characterization of this particular wetland and wetland restoration. Okay. The other thing that I've, I've been going back and forth, but I think I'm, we're just going to try it this way. Um, uh, I will put you all into groups of three people. So the assignment you're going to do is, um, and this is a couple week assignment because you know we're announcing it now, but it, the first part isn't due till due for a while. Um, uh, you will submit one one submission per your group, so you don't all three have to do it. You guys can contribute. So my hope is, um, I, I want to, I'm, I'm going to find out today if people think they they probably won't come. If in the last minute you guys, something happens, if you suddenly feel ill on, on Wednesday, if you happen to have talked to President Trump, you know, the day before or something like that, you obviously have to self-quarantine. Um, and so uh, uh, 
you know, you can always not come at the last minute, but, but I'm trying to just get a sense of how many people um, now, and we've talked about it in theory, we've talked about it sort of in the broad sense, would you want to, da, da, da. but now that we're, it's becoming real for next week, I want to get a sense of that. And I want to, I'll, I'll craft the group such that um, uh, there hopefully will be at least one person from each, the, each of the groups that will be able to attend in person. So one of your team members can be there to take notes or to, to take pictures and, and stuff of that nature. Um, so cool. So again, I just want to emphasize, no one's penalized. Do not feel, I don't want to make anybody feel in any way, shape or form they have to attend. I hope you would be interested in attending. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a, a break from this Zoom stuff. Um, but again, no, no, I won't think anything bad of you. Your grades will not suffer, nothing like that. So want to be ultra, ultra, ultra clear um, in that vein. Um, okay. So uh, having said that, uh, I want to talk about what this next assignment is going to be. Um, and unless there's some very introductory questions, if there's introductory questions about that, otherwise I'm going to go just explain what, what's going to go on next week. Cool. Okay. So um, uh, I have a new module. I know I've been lame and haven't updated modules in the last couple of weeks in this class. That's all me. I'm, I'm, I'm super swamped and I've been having issues. Uh, but um, I have a new module up and this module is one of the uh, main approaches we're going to take for over the next several weeks. Um, what is that approach? It's this. Oh, sorry. Can you guys see my, can you guys see my screen yet? No. Sorry. sorry, yeah. sorry. Hold on. Give me one second. No. Okay. Can you see my screen now? The, uh, 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 text on my screen it says coastal yeah. wetland characterization. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Cool. So, um, this is, this stuff is in a, um, is in a module now on our, uh, CI learn site, but I just want to walk through this. Okay. So a couple things. First, this is what I'm showing you is the full characterization, the full assignment. The very first thing that'll be due in two weeks is just the first part of this and a little brief video, one to four minute video. Okay. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over the whole thing with you so you, you get a sense of what we're, what we're trying to do, okay? Now, the setting for this, the, the context for this assignment is um, we're gonna pretend that each of you are working for a local environmental consulting firm, a restoration consulting firm. Um, uh, you guys think that you're stressed out and you guys think that you get all, and I give you all these assignments last minute and I don't get stuff up in time and everything. And you're right. Uh, and uh, sometimes it might think that, oh my God, this college stuff is crazy. Um, the real world is like this as well. I shouldn't say the real world. The, the, the employment world outside of the university is like this as well. So um, when it comes to doing things like thinking about restoration, planning for a restoration, we usually don't have a whole lot of time, right? We usually don't have years and years and years to mull it over. We usually have, especially in, the, in a consulting world context, we have, you know, a day, a couple days, a week or two, you know, we don't have uh, often large blocks of time. So the context of this assignment is you're working for a local consulting firm and they get a, requ a request for proposals or a, a request for people to submit proposals to restore this site, okay? And so you're the low uh, man or woman on the totem pole and your boss calls you in and goes, yo, we just got this, this um, uh, notice that they're, that they're getting ready to do a bid for, um, for this, this project and we wanna bid for it, right? We, we, wanna, we wanna put our name in to maybe get the contract to do this restoration. But the first step always is get a lay of the land, you know, quick sense of what's going on. So that is what this is. This is so, so you're the, the entry level employee and your boss has said, hey, go get me a quick uh, site characterization of, of this particular site. In this case, we're doing Malibu Lagoon. And so you're gonna, you're gonna create a, a written document. Let's take a look at what that site characterization is gonna be. So it's broken into a, a few parts. The current status here, uh, the restoration planning or, or proposal, you can think of as, as, as initial proposal, key elements of the proposal, 
and then any references at the sources of information. How do you know that this is, this is the case? For this first assignment, which would, which would be due in two weeks, um, uh, you only, we're, I'm going to, I'm breaking this in, in parts. So the first one is, is just this current status part. So I'm calling this part one. So everything from, from here down to here. Okay. And you'll notice for each thing, and, and, and you guys will have this as uh, we have this already on, on um, your CI keys, I mean, your uh, CI learn page, but um, I'm trying to make this as, as, as straightforward as possible for you all. So you guys should just copy these headers or retype them if you want and use them exactly as, as I have here, right? I've also given you guidance in terms of what do I mean by this, okay? So this is, this is, you know, a one sentence thing. This is a one paragraph thing. This is, you know, that kind of deal to, to help you, right? To, this is our first one. We're trying, trying to, you know, without this guidance, some people will write 40 pages. Some people will write four lines. So trying to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, um, okay. So what are you going to do? You're going to turn, again, this is, this is going to be a group project. So, so you'll turn in one document, but it'll have three folks' name on it, names on it. Um, so first you can say what the site name is. In this case, it's Malibu Lagoon, right? The location, this is in Ventura County, or excuse me, this is in Los Angeles County and something about a one sentence description of the site. This is a coastal estuary, you know, squished between the Pacific Coast Highway and, and the ocean or something like that. Um, and then, okay, so what's the general context? Setting. How big, in terms of hectares, how big was this wetland, or is this wetland today? How big was it when um, we were converting to a territory of the United States, right? Uh, clearly, uh, native peoples, the Chumash, have, have, you know, did some kind of manipulation in the area. Clearly, uh, the um, rancheros, had some impact on, in our region, but clearly most of the impact, most of the transformation of our wetlands and impacts are gonna happen after the gold rush. And so that's where this date comes from. There isn't anything particularly magic about 1850, but it's a nice round date and it's essentially the start of the American takeover of California. So that's where that comes from. So, so extent right now, extent in 1850. How are you gonna know what the extent is in 1850? That's a, that's a challenge, right? That's a hard one. Um, but uh, you're going to do your best job, right? You're going to take your best stab. Looking at the lay of the land, looking at the geomorphology, looking at Google Earth, right? That kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and, and just sort of making some best guesses. Cool? So um, one way to, okay, I'll, I'll come back and do questions. How about this? We'll, we'll just go through the quick summary and then I'll come back and, and talk about some more of the specifics. Uh, wetland type, you know, this is a coastal salt marsh, this is a, a vernal pool, what is it, that kind of thing. Um, a map, a, a map looking down, you can just take a screenshot from Google Maps or whatever, right? Um, it's up to you how you want to do it, but, but no, no fancy requirements here, but just a, a map, you know, looking, uh, you know, nadir, looking straight down on the ground. Could be a map you find someone else has produced, that's cool. But the key thing about the map is you need to indicate the gross hydrology of the site. Where water is coming in, where water is going out. Um, uh, as best as you can tell. Um, again, with all these things that we're doing this from a quick site visit, from some whatever literature you can find on this, looking at maps. Um, some of these questions, you know, to do a, a detailed hydrological assessment, we need to put in wells and dig and drill. We're not doing that, right? We're just gonna take our, our best stab um, at, uh, at a quick assessment. Again, you only have a couple days, your boss needs some stuff, you're doing the best you can in a couple days notice for your boss. Uh, directions how to get there. Uh, this, is, this is gonna be pretty simple for Malibu, but some other sites potentially might not be straightforward. They might be behind some locked gates, they might be on some uh, public lands, might be on some private lands. So you always want to tell people how to get to the site. Um, if there's some passcode, if there's some, uh, and not just how to get the site, but how to get there and, and work at the site effectively. So in some cases, some areas, it's really dangerous to park in some places because of traffic or because of vandalism or something of that nature. So you want to 
give the lay of the land so your bosses and future folks know how to safely and, and uh, responsibly access the site. Uh, then a few photos, right? And so, so again, I have some suggestions here. We'll go back, we can go back and talk about the specifics, but basically, you know, a couple images, a, a couple uh, 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 characterizations, visual characterizations of what's going on the site. And then just a one sentence quick overview. This site is rocking, it looks really good. This site is, is, is covered with invasive species that are threatening to exclude all the natives. This site is a great potential habitat for endangered tidewater goby, you know, whatever. Your one little um, uh, uh, quick general assessment of the site. Next, you're gonna go into stuff that, that's a little more in depth and you need a little bit uh, you know, more attention paid. And so one is the current site summary. So this is just the overall, what's, well, what's, the, what's the setting of the site? And again, we're going to um, imagine, which is a little bit hard to believe in the case of Malibu, but, but we're just gonna imagine our boss has never been here, okay? Our boss is a professional, environmental professional. We don't need to define you know, salinity or you know, coastal salt marsh. They, they know what that means, but they haven't been to this particular site. So we're gonna give a, a, a quick, just you know, half page, couple paragraph, what's the setting of this site? And then the spe specifically the ecological characterization. Hey, this is what the, the life is doing here. We have you know, this type of plant community. We seem to have abundant birds. We seem to, uh, uh, you know, whatever, have, have abundant uh, nuisance birds like crows there, that kind of thing. Landscape context. So the landscape context is gonna be the stuff outside of our immediate wetland area. So is there good, um, uh, grassland abutting it? Is there shrubland abutting it? Um, is there stuff downstream from the site or, or you know, uh, between the, the wetland in this case and the ocean, for example? So how this fits in the overall context, uh, context of, the, um, of, of the wetland. And then um, because hydrology is so important, right? If we don't have water come into our site, we don't have a wetland. If we have water all the time, it's also not a wetland, right? It becomes a lake or something like something of that nature. So, um, but oftentimes in coastal California, dealing with restorations, there are some types of uh, existing barriers or, and, and challenges. And so what are those? What are the hydrological constraints? Is there a dam on this river? Uh, is this river channelized? Or is, me, is the incoming water channelized? Um, is the, is the mouth manually breached or mechanically breached, excuse me, by people if the water gets too high? Those types of things. Um, uh, and the setting, the restoration setting. So anything that has been done to date, in the case of Malibu, there's been a lot done, tons that have been, ton, ton, tons of previous restoration activities. So uh, you wanna do that, uh, or you wanna re re report what that is. And then the management history. So it might not be restoration per se, but there, in almost all these cases will be some management, right? So there's gonna be some, some people doing something, spraying for mosquito control, uh, 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 putting in roadways, um, uh, uh, introducing non-native plants to stabilize the banks in, in an adjacent house that, that spills out into our wetland or stuff of that nature, um, okay? That's gonna be your part one. Those sections are gonna, or those elements are gonna be um, what you're gonna submit in two weeks. Uh, uh, after we do that, the, the, next, uh, the next assignment will be to finish us off, which is the restoration planning. Now the stuff above us, this is, the stuff so far is mostly, um, you know, you guys can get from, from mostly kind of going out to the site and looking around or looking on a map, right? Um, and you're in this part one is more you're you're reporting what's going on with uh, with the, um, the the site and the history part two <clears throat> Which we're not quite ready to go into because I need to talk more about this stuff But part two is really where you're starting your first stab at thinking about What would we do and what could we actually do in a restoration? <clears throat> and so this part you guys would actually propose what you might do you know, what, what the action your employer might want to take is. And that, that's going to be written out. And then uh, uh, three priorities. So, so three little paragraphs that are, yeah, we can do all this kind of stuff, 
But regardless, these three things are the most important steps that we should take first. So if we have limited money, if we, if we have limited time, if we have a wildfire and you know, all these other complicating factors, what's, what are the, the most important steps, three most important steps to get us going in terms of our restoration? Those, those three steps, sorry, are gonna be um, what the group comes up with uh, collectively, like, well, okay, perfect. Yeah, sorry. So um, historically I've done this assignment as an individual assignment, but because of COVID um, and because not everybody can get out there and I wanna try to be fair to everybody, um, we're doing it as a group project. So I should say all of this stuff is, is your, what your group is gonna decide. So that wetland acreage, you know, uh, one of you guys might decide it's 10 and somebody might think, man, it's more like 12 and somebody else might say, oh, it's eight, right? You guys just get together over Zoom and chat about it and, and come to an agreement, right? And so, so all these things, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I guess in that sense, I guess you could think of it as, as, you know, I don't know, uh, 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 Dana's, uh, 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 priority, Diana's priority, uh, Loretta's priority or something like, you know, I mean, you, you guys can decide how you want to do it. But again, this is, this is a holistic document you guys are submitting as a group. Um, and then, and then you're going to say, uh, okay, so first one is, what I want to do overall proposal for the restoration um, at a more sort of concept stage. Uh, what I would do with the, um, you know, what are, our, what are our key first steps? And then what's the thing, this next thing, the greatest current or future impediment, what's the thing most likely to de derail us? Okay. Um, in terms of the f functioning, the dynamics, the goings on of this system could be a road there. Right, it could be um, uh, eutrophication uh, coming from a local business. It could be um, vandalism from people, right? From from people coming in and, and ripping up plants and stuff, as as happens. Uh, it could be, um, you know, any host of a whole host of things. But but it's really important to make sure we flag that because um, if there is something that that's a really massive impediment, we probably want to make sure we address that when we do our full plan, right? And then um, a, a brief species list. Now by species list, this could mean the things you want to introduce, the, the plants you want to plant, for example, the desirous species you want to plant. Could also be the things that you want to get rid of, right? That you want to, um, that the invasive species that you want to control or reduce or eliminate. Um, it could also be something that you're not, you're not uh, gonna be introducing yourself you're not gonna be removing yourself, but if there's a, a, a key, say, threatened or endangered species that you wanna make sure you, you uh, have them persisting at the site, right? So I'm not looking here for a list of 300 species of everything, just sort of the key, you know, the, the core things, again, you want your employer to, to, to be thinking about, you know, to flag. Don't forget about this endangered species, don't forget about this invader, that kind of thing. Um, or, or if there's some real core, you know, if you, if you were doing a, a planting palette, the sort of the three, you know, or, the, or whatever, three, four, five, whatever species that you definitely want to make sure you're going to contract for and purchase uh, in terms of the um, of, of eventual restoration. And then uh, lastly, uh, what the community uh, uh, thinks about this or what the community could think about this site how so so far we've been talking about um you know the ecology the geomorphology the water you know the kind of science the natural science side of stuff this last question is super key and this is what uh is there community buy-in right and and this this will i'll tell you some stories next week out in malibu um some crazy stories insane stories that um I wouldn't have thought I'd ever seen, uh, seen. well, yeah, the whole country is insane these days, but, but, but anyway, um, so stuff about community buy-in, um, how we can engage the community, how are we truly gonna collaborate with the community to, to get them to feel like they own this, to really make them not just feel like they own this, but, but make sure that they do conceptualize this as part of their home, part of their, their, um, their wetland. Uh, as it were. And then lastly, it's just references, right? So, so any references that you use and, and, and all this and that. 
I will say before I pause now and just ask for your questions and or go back and start giving you guys more specific details if you want to do that now. Um, with references, ideally peer reviewed, right? Those are going to be our, our most robust, our most reliable. But as we'll see, as we get more and more to the specifics of restoration, um, oftentimes there just aren't uh, a whole lot of, of peer reviewed documents. The pecking order would go peer reviewed scientific literature. The next would be gray literature. So things from the consulting world that aren't necessarily peer reviewed, but have been produced by the consulting world or perhaps a government agency type of thing. And then super important uh, in, in almost all of these cases that we'll do here, uh, popular press accounts, media accounts, right? So um, that's really gonna be key, especially for things such as the community use, community perception, support of the site, stuff of that nature. Maybe stuff of the history of this, of this area, right? So those types of documents are really key. We don't wanna over rely or rely only on some news you know, stories, which tend to be more anecdotal oftentimes, especially if they're done by um, a more local media paper, Malibu Times or something of that nature, Daily Breeze or something like that. Um, but they're still good, they're still good. Just wanna make sure that, that we don't solely rely upon um, newspaper accounts. Um, okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get out there, we'll start at nine o'clock next week, or maybe 9.05, because if I'm, if I'm doinking around with the video camera, it might take me a minute or two to get set up. But uh, you should try to log on at nine o'clock if you're not gonna be with us next week. If you are going to be with us, please show up there by nine o'clock. Um, and, uh, and we're essentially going to do a walking tour. We're going to walk around the site and I'm going to walk and point stuff out. Um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll finish. Um, finish, I'm hoping around 11-ish, so that if you guys do indeed have a class at, at noon when our class terminates, if anyone is in that boat, you can, um, you should be able to make it, uh, you know, get back to home, hopefully in time to be able to get on your next Zoom class or, or whatever it is that you do at, at noon on, on Fridays. Um, okay, I can go into more detail, but that, that's the quick and dirty uh, uh, for um, next Friday, our first field trip. Is that cool? Any general questions about that so far? I have a question. So yeah. I was looking at the reading material and it says that we're supposed to post a one to four minute video. Is that with our group or is yep. that individual? Yep. yep. So I'm going to talk about the video next, but, but, um, but yes, so that's the, everything here is group. So in this, in this first wetland characterization, it's all group. So you guys are going to submit your part one, one of them for the, all three of you. You're also going to make a brief video one video for all of your group. Again, I'm, 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 if, if some of us, and, and, and not everybody's going in the field, that, that's just a fact, right? Um, and so uh, if you don't go in the field, one of your partners can be out there taking some photos, taking some videos, et cetera. If everybody in your group just unfortunately falls ill or, or what have you, um, I will provide some, some you know, general video you guys can use too for that. Um, but, but it's going to be way better if you guys can use your own video. But um, yeah, sorry, does that answer your question, Jan? Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. Other, other sort of high level general overview questions about that? Are you going to get a, um, like a gen once, you, once you get a general idea as to who is going to go to the actual um, lagoon, are you going to try to make those groups accordingly so that each, like if, if there's, you know, 10 people that are going to go to the lagoon, you're going to put each one of those people into yes. a separate. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. That, that's why I haven't, that's why I actually started randomly assigning them. Like, eh, it's not a good idea. So yeah. So the idea is, uh, and again, totally understand if I assign that and maybe you just, the way luck of the draw, I don't know how many people want to go, but let's, let, let's take an extreme outlier. Let's say that um, you're in a group of three and two of your folks aren't gonna come because one is in San Diego, the other one is feeling ill. And so you're, you're the point person as it were for, for the, the going to Malibu next week. You're like, okay guys, I'll take photos, I'll take some video. And everybody's like, great. And then uh, 
Thursday morning, you wake up and your throat's all scratchy, right? And you're like, man, I shouldn't have gone to that Trump rally. Uh, and you're like, darn it. Uh, and so, um, and so you're like, hey, man, I, I, Dr. A, I don't, I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's a good idea for me to go. Uh, that's all good, right? You, you guys will still be able to do well in this assignment and figure it out. Um, but I'm going to try, I want to hopefully set it up such that uh, barring that last minute someone getting ill, there is at least one person from, from the, your group that'll be there in person. Hopefully, hopefully two or three, but, but, um, but yes, that's my intent. Other, other general overview questions? Okay, cool. Um, then let me just uh, uh, real quick go over a couple more things and then we'll, we'll switch to some other stuff for today. Um, so uh, let me just say here um, a couple questions that I, that I typically get. So I'm just gonna run through each of these little subheadings. You guys ask me any, any questions, and I know you haven't seen this yet and you need to, to look at it and, and mull it over a bit, but um, I just wanna go through some of the, the typical questions I get. You guys can also ask me some questions if you want. But uh, again, site name should be obvious. Uh, location, the county, and the one sentence description. Latin lawn in decimal degrees. Uh, and that would just be at the center of the site. So, you know, uh, so people can easily access it. Okay, how are we gonna do this, Dr. A? How are we gonna do the, the wetland extent? You're going to eyeball it is a short answer. The real answer, right, if we were, if we were gonna go around, we would go, we'd, we'd look for the hydric soils, we'd look for um, facultative or obligate um, uh, wetland plants, you know, standing water, those, the, the tripartite legal definitions of the wetland extent, right? We have this thing called jurisdictional wetland extent. In theory, that's what we'd like to have. We, we're not gonna go, you know, off-roading, off-trail and all that kind of stuff with a big group. Um, uh, were we to be in a consulting firm, we probably do want to call up the owners, state parks, uh, 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 open space district, whoever owns the particular site and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm blah, 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 I'm bidding on this contract and I'm just hoping I can um, have some permission next Wednesday to go out to your site and spend a couple hours just walking around. The, the, whoever controls the site would probably say yes, sign our liability waiver um, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and, and you can go do that. In our context though, Malibu Lagoon, for example, is a very heavily visited site. Um, we don't wanna take our big, well, we'll see how big it is. Hopefully it's a big group, right? Socially distanced, of course, safely spaced out. But, but uh, it is, um, let's say problematic in a, in a high traffic area like this to have all of us walk off trail and go and start you know, mushing around in the wetland because that tends to encourage the other visitors to do that. So we're not gonna go off trail um, or maybe I'll step off trail for like two feet to, to touch a plant and show you guys something, but, but we're, gonna, we're gonna try to stay on the trail so we don't encourage other people from going off the trail when we're there. So we're gonna do our best estimate at the 2020 extent. But again, what about the 1850 extent? Do you guys think you might take a stab at figuring that out of any site? I mean, you know, just I wherever, would say whatever. like pull up aerial photographs and like if you're gonna go on like arc pro something, you can just do like a quick and dirty, you know, measurement of mm -hmm. um yeah of the side of the lagoon. Good. Anybody else? Any other uh, any other ideas? Can you look for a historical maps? Uh, I'm sorry. Do I look for what? Historical maps. Oh, totally. Yep, absolutely. I think, uh, why can't I type in here? I can't, I can't type. Uh, um, yes, we can definitely look for historical maps. Um, hold on, you guys. Why is this, why is my thing not letting me do this? Yeah, so historical, so um, a one site would be, um, what the heck is this? Why is my thing not letting me type in? Okay, let's try this. So yes, so absolutely. Uh, aerial 
map collections. There's a, the Fairchild collection at UCLA is a fantastic one. Fairchild collection started in 1930. Well, I think it started in 1939, some sometime around maybe 1929, something like that. Uh, Fairchild was the name of a dude that owned an airplane and he flew around and just figured out that because airplanes are expensive, especially back even the back then. And he started leaning over the side and taking photos. Chick, 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 chick. And then realized, oh, I can sell these to developers, to planners, to city people, to people doing advertisements. And so he just had all these images of Southern California um, and then other places he liked to go vacation, basically. And uh, eventually gave those to UCLA and those have been digitized. There's similar things all up and down the coast. UCSB has a, has a maps and images library, um, et cetera. Some of these you have to physically go to, but others like the Fairchild and, and others, they're increasingly being digitized. So you don't need to physically go to the location to be able to access the, the image. Um, and so that's great. So let's look at, let's look at this. So here, so one, one simple way is to use Google Earth Pro. You can use Google Maps as well, right? But the nice thing about this, right, as you guys all know, you guys are probably all played with this. And you guys can all see this, right, on my screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So here we go. So this is, so here's PCH to orient us, right? Here's Pacific Coast Highway, the one. Here's Malibu Pier. Um, this is the wetland area that we're talking about. This is, this is our wetland. Um, uh, focal area. Um, so, uh, so this, this area here is the main wetland area. It extends back up here. This is, this is Malibu Creek. This is a, this is a riparian zone, right? A very narrow, very constrained um, uh, valley here. Um, just looking at this, knowing nothing else, just making a best guess, and it'll make much more sense once you guys are there. But this is flat. This is all flat here. Mountains. Maybe we can. Uh, what we'll do here. Oh, maybe I don't have my 3D turned on. That's what's going on. Um, anyway, uh, so God, this Zoom really screws up all my desktop controls. I apologize, you guys. What the hell is going on here? Um, anyway, if, if, I, if, I, if I could tilt this, I don't know why my, my controls don't let me tilt it, but if I could, um, we'd see that this area, so here we have a, a, a shopping center, okay? This area is called the so-called chili cook-off uh, property, where, where the city of Malibu used to historically have um, um, a big uh, festival. Um, this is a flat parking lot. Um, uh, th these are houses on the flat, you know, coastal strand here. This is a developer who put in a golf course who wasn't allowed to and then said, screw it, I'm rich and I'm wealthy and I'm a white dude, so I should be able to do this. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about that next week. <clears throat> um, and so, so all this area here is basically flat. Once we start going over here, these houses are, are up into the um, hills, right? Up into the mountains. But this whole area here, is basically a flat, flat area. I would reasonably guess that this area was probably wetland, right? This, this water, which is channelized here, which is constrained to stay in this channel here, um, uh, d what, there wasn't always concrete here with the buildings. So I would guesstimate that, you know, at least this low-lying area is probably what the area is. One simple thing you can do, golly, Man, sorry, you guys. One simple thing you can do is you can just come up here and is use your, your measurement tools here. And I could uh, do a polygon. I asked you guys for the results in hectares, right? So you can pick hectares. And I can come here and I can say right now, it looks like the the wetland extent is, you know, I'm just doing this super, super quick, is something like about, you know, we'll call it something like that. And this says this is about uh, 15 hectares, right? Or something like that. Okay, cool, clear that. What about back in the day, right? What about before we had all these buildings in here, maybe the wetland is something more, you know, like this perhaps. 
right? So maybe it was maybe it was something closer to 80 or 90 hectares before, right? Now, if you can find some historic studies, and in places like Malibu Goon, there actually will be some some more detailed history on this, but but you know where you can find more detail, more specific records, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, you should be using that. But but I'm just you know what whatever you find or don't find, you can always do this type of analysis, right? You can always do a quick and dirty with Google Earth to get a sense, to ballpark what we're talking about. Are we talking about a thousand acres? Are we talking about one acre? We're talking about 10 acres now and in the past. Granted, the, hydro, the, the topography and, and the water sources and stuff might have changed now, and, and we might not be privy to what the conditions were in 1850, but you can still make a decent guess that is at least going to be, you know, decently realistic, um, at least for this context of a couple day prep for your employer. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry. Also, we can we can step back through time, right? So we can also, uh, depending on 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 what our settings are, uh, we can go back more or less in more or less in time with uh, with the um, history function in um, Google Earth. Okay. Uh, Sorry guys, I gotta, this is super annoying. I gotta, I gotta pause the screen share. I cannot manipulate my documents. Okay. Let me get back to this. Okay, so, oh man, where the hell did it go? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, okay, so there we go. So we got, we got our, our, our 2020 extent, we got our 1850 extent. My suggestion would be before next week, you guys get together in your groups and just start to knock out. So some of this stuff you can get right now. Your Latin lawn, you can do right now, right? Um, the 2020 extent, you can take a stab at it, right? So do as much as you can before next Friday so that when we go out, you can edit it, right? So you can print up a little, a little 2020 map of what you think the wetland extent is. And as we're walking around, you can say, hey, is this realistic? Ooh, actually, no, the wetland is actually much smaller than I thought or, or it's actually much bigger than I thought. So you'll help yourself tremendously out by taking a stab, a draft. We go out, you, you get ideas for modifying or fixing or augmenting that. And then, uh, 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 you know, after we're back, back home, you can, you can then incorporate those edits. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, map about surface inflows and outflows. So there, there may well be subsurface water into this site. There may, may well be subsurface water out of this site. Um, that sort of, that takes a little bit more and actually probably a lot more uh, understanding. So that, that's one that isn't necessarily readily apparent. It could be, but it isn't necessarily always readily apparent to us what that water source might be. So if you notice here, I've talked about major surface inflows and outflows okay now in the context of malibu lagoon i guarantee a major inflow and outflow depending on tide and, and settings um is going to be the ocean the pacific ocean right because we're going to have just a little sandy wall between our uh built up water our standing water in the lagoon and the ocean and so if the if the elevation of that water is high gravity is going to help pull that water or help make that water flow into the ocean. If it's low and the tide is high, same thing. Gravity is going to, is going to, the, the hydrological head, the pressure there is going to actually push water into the lagoon. So we can pretty much say that in, in, a, in a context like this, but in most contexts, I'm not assuming you guys would be able to figure that out. So, so you're just going to do a screenshot if you want of your, of your Google earth. 
Um, or if you guys can find some other maps or whatever, you're more than welcome to use that. And then you're just going to draw on there with an, with an editing tool. You can do it in Word or, or Google Docs, however you're going to do it. Um, you know, draw an arrow and say, you know, inflow and draw an arrow outflow. There could be multiple inflows. There could be multiple outflows. And so you're going to just uh, uh, give us a sense of, of where the water is coming from and going to. Again, the directions on how to access the site. Um, any, any, no, any notations about that? You can park in the parking lot, but the parking lot closes at, closes at dawn or, or opens at dawn and closes at dusk, stuff of that nature. Uh, photos, we'll talk about more about that in a second. Um, and then overall site characterization, you guys get what that means. Current site summary, should be obvious. Ecological community characterization, should be obvious. Landscape, obvious. Hydrological constraints, again, those are going to be issues that are um, existing now. So what are the current hydrological constraints? Sometimes we get so used to our manipulated world, we don't necessarily see things as a constraint. What I mean by constraints here is the constraint from the natural state of the system. Okay. So if there's a dam upstream, that would be a constraint. If there's massive, um, if there's massive, uh, 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 urbanization around your site, meaning there's a lot of uh, impermeable surfaces. So if we do get a big, you know, dump of rain, most of that rain is not going to go into the ground, but it's going to run off the concrete and then run into storm drain and then run into our wetland. That's a constraint, right? That, 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 that's, a, that's a huge issue for toxins and pollutants and first flushes and things of that nature. Um, so that's what I mean by hydrological constraint. And then uh, just to finish up the, the part one, that's your first thing that's going to be due, um, your restoration activities to date. Um, some of this you'll be able to tell from going out to the site, most of which you're going to need to find historic documents on this, right? So previous project proposals, um, that type of stuff. It could be, depending on the, the site that we're talking about, I mean, this is Malibu, we're starting with a relatively easy one, but, but going to the site, um, oftentimes, News articles are going to be your first clue that a restoration activity was done or, 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 or uh, you know, uh, yeah, a restoration was done. And then once you get the, the, the date, maybe the name of the project, maybe the, the firm or the agency that's doing it, then you can take those and start searching using those terms to see if you can actually find more technical documentation of what was actually done. Um, okay. Uh, uh, and again, I should say, in the case of Malibu, you might feel very lucky because you, you'll know, start searching around and I guarantee you're going to start finding some of the documents since we just did a major restoration that was years in the making, years in the doing, and it, we're still in the multi years of assessment. So there's a lot of historical documents for this. So um, still, the goal here is for you to summarize what has happened. And, and for your, your employer, your boss. So just because you might find a, a great report that someone else wrote, you're not, I don't want you to go in and copy the first page of their you know, introduction and just insert it here. I want you to put it in your words, right? And you summarize stuff. So absolutely, you can quote that and use those great references and you should reference them. But we don't do direct block quotes. We're not, we're not uh, you know, an, an, uh, an essay for your history class or something of that nature, right? You're going to summarize the, that um, maybe uh, other document, other text, and you're going you're gonna to sort of turn it into a summary version. Um, okay, and then management history. Uh, yeah, sorry, question. Somebody, Christian, or somebody had a question. So for that management history, should we include who was in charge of that project? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So um, as, well, let's see. Do I have an example from Malibu again? I guess maybe not necessarily, but in some cases it really does matter who did it. So there might be a super sketch restoration firm, it might be a super reputable restoration firm. They might be a government agency that was experiencing massive cuts under the Reagan administration or something and had very little, you know, um, very little free board to do stuff. Maybe it was an agency that is super flush with cash from the state or, you know, whatever. So, so, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't overly focus on who did it, but I think it is important to also name names in terms of who did, who did what. Um, so I wouldn't spend you know, paragraphs saying who did it, but I think it's, it's great to say the restoration 1982 led by Moffat and Nichols 
or, or led by the consulting firm Moffat and Nichols, you know, something of that nature. Uh, other questions? Okay, so I'll just finish this up since, since so we'll have this as a recording for you guys. Even though these next um, several questions uh, are, are gonna be the part two, they're not the first thing that's due. But just since we're talking about all these components, um, there might be something you also wanna gather, you definitely wanna gather data from our site visit for this, even though it's not due, right? Okay, so, so the first thing we're gonna, say, we're gonna wanna say is, how can we improve the ecological functioning of the system? All these systems are impacted in one way, shape, or another. Even the ones that have been restored, even the ones that seem to be doing relatively well, all of our sites here in Southern California can better or, 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 or can benefit from some type of, uh, of, of restoration activities. So we want to we want to do here is you know talk about maybe the conceptual why you know the theoretical why. Well, you know it'd be great if we had more. Um, uh, higher productivity at this site, or higher reproduction rates, higher recruitment rates, more babies being born, you know, in terms of our birds or our fish or our invertebrates or whatever it is. And so to do that, I think it would be great as, okay, let's pick a specific. Well, so it'd be great if we had more birds um, uh, in this area. Uh, one way we can accomplish that, we, we can either control how the birds are dying, or how we're adding birds to the system, right? So maybe you might decide that there's a ton of predators at, at our site. So the, the approach you're gonna take is to reduce mortality. So I'm going to start a predator eradication program here, possibly. Or maybe I want there to be more babies born. And so these babies need a specific plant. So I'm gonna plant these these uh, specific plants for the, for the birdies, that's gonna allow them to build better, more robust, more successful nests. And that those nests in turn will, will allow higher chick rearing success rates, right? That kind of, that, that's the sort of idea I'm talking about here. Don't just say, I wanna do this, but there's a motivation, a conceptual motivation for why we'd wanna do this. And then, and then what you might do. Um, now this is, this is a planning stage, right? And so I said about two pages, there's nothing magical about that. You don't necessarily have to go for two pages and go a little bit longer, it's gonna vary. But, but the point is, um, you know, I would look at these, uh, also when you first get in your group and you guys are talking about stuff, this is also a guide as to how much time to effort to put in this, right? So this current site summary is about half a page-ish, right? If you go three tenths of a page, am I gonna fail you? No. If you write, you know, three quarters or a page on this, am I going to fail you? No, but I'm trying to help you guys figure out how to budget your limited time. What is true is the current site summary is half page. The, the proposed restoration efforts is two pages, right? Four, at about four times the amount of effort should go into this as is going into this. Does that make sense? So use this as a guide for your, when you guys are, are working on, you know, your, your calendar over the next couple of weeks. Like, you know, how much time do I have to put into this? Um, if you're like me, oftentimes you'll start one of these things and you'll be getting into things and you're like, oh my God, and you'll spend like, you know, two days on this or something. And then you, you run out of time by the time you get to the end. Use the, the uh, real estate here in your document as a rough guide as to how much time you should be spending on these different sections. Okay? Okay, uh, yeah, and I should also say with regards to this, when we do a, a full proposal, right, we would want to give much more detail. Actually, what we'll, we'll typically do is we'll do something like this, like a quick overview, conceptual overview type of restoration proposal. Next, we would probably do something which would be called, often people use the term 30%. So we would, we would um, sort of estimate about uh, you do about 30% of a full restoration plan. So enough that we can sort of understand where most of the expense is gonna come from. Oh my gosh, we're gonna need to bring in a lot of soil. Oh my gosh, we're gonna need to excavate a lot of soil. Oh my gosh, we're gonna need to move that bridge. You know, so, so the 30% the is design is gonna help us 
have a much more accurate budget and time estimate. This project's gonna take us two years. This project is gonna cost us $5 million, right? And then, and then once you get through that 30% design, then you'd go to the full design, the full 100% design. In the case of something like Malibu Lagoon, that would include hiring hydrological engineers or maybe using hydrological engineers in your firm, but hiring people to specifically model different conditions going into the future. Okay, what if we had a storm surge? Okay, cool. What if uh, you know, we had a wildfire and debris and a bunch of debris blew down the, the coastal stream and dumped into our lagoon? What would that do? Right, so, so, so you kind of need to go through all those exercises. That's gonna cost money to hire those experts, to do those computer simulations, things of that nature. And then you'd have your 100% plan. Then you'd actually do your implementation and then you'd create what's called your as-builts. This would be, even though we had this, this plan to do the, the restoration like this, maybe you guys stumbled into a, um, a buried gas line you didn't know about. You had to modify the shape of the pond somehow or whatever, right? So then we'd have our as-builts. And that's what you would turn into the county. That's what you turn into the Coastal Commission. That's what you turn into the, the agency that hired you. And that would become the, the, the document of record for what you actually did. So again, the phases of this conceptual uh, characterization and, and conceptual approach, which is what we're doing. You do your 30%, then you do your 100%, and then when you're done with the project, you do your as-builts. That, that's, the, that's the flow through here. Um, okay, and then you do, you do your assessment as to whether the restoration works or not, but that's, that's a little bit different from the plan per se. Okay, uh, as far as your, your first three priorities, why three, why not two, why not four? I just picked the number out of the hat, but three seems, one seems to be a little too much, and you, know, you guys are just learning how to do this. Three seems to be about good. In, your, in the real world, that would, this could vary. Maybe you'd pick four, maybe you'd pick six, but, but for us, we'll pick three um, for improved management of the site. Now this could include the restoration action specifically. It could include some things that are related to the restoration, but might not be restoration stuff exactly. So maybe it says, you know, we really need to move this power plant. We really need to remove this power plant out of the edge of, or, or this home off of the perimeter of my site, right? That's not necessarily a restoration effort, but it is a management thing that would impact the functioning of the restoration, the future of the site. Uh, yeah, and then, and then again, the, 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 the single greatest impediment that, that might cause us problems. Um, oh, sorry, I, I just said that. Um, and then species lists, again, uh, not looking for hundreds and hundreds of species here, looking for key. So either characteristic things you wanna plant, endangered things you want to conserve, uh, problematic things you want to remove or control. And then community use and perception. Uh, are, do people in this community really seem to like this wetland? When, you're out, when we're out there visiting, do we see a lot of local people visiting? Do we see a lot of tourists visiting? Uh, you know, how might, how might, if it's a bunch of tourists, maybe the local community really likes the business that this brings in, right? If it's local, if it's grandmas and little kids walking dogs and things, maybe it's very important that they have a walkable area, right? So that, uh, so that we really make sure there's, there's passive recreation opportunities at the site. And that would maybe really help their buy-in. Um, on that same vein, if we see there's a lot of people walking around and, and using it for passive, rest, restoration, passive recreation, but then in your restoration plan, you eliminate hiking trails or biking trails or whatever, that may well tick off the people, right? And they might start to say, this is, this is baloney. We don't, want to, we don't want to support this project um, and so on and so forth. Cool. Okay, um, we are uh, up at our first break. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm also gonna stop this recording, but um, 